Today, we're going to fly around for a half hour using only one battery pack. But we're not just gonna fly around. We're gonna go somewhere. We're gonna go up there. Okay, so here we go. The quad we're flying today is a Chimera 7, which has recently been fitted with a DJI O3 setup. And this right here is the 6S2P lithium ion battery pack that we're testing today. Will we have enough power? Can this DJI O3 setup even reach seven kilometers? These are the questions. This is the flight. Now this lithium ion battery is made from MoliCell P42A cells and it is fresh. This is in fact its first flight. Now for the past couple years, I've used two packs in parallel and it's worked really well, but now they are pretty worn out. It was time to replace them. Now these giant 6S2P packs are quite large. In fact, this setup weighs about 850 grams, which yes, does make the quad feel pretty heavy, but being a seven inch, it does cruise along quite nicely. Now I will say my go-to battery for this quad is actually a smaller lithium ion pack made with MoliCell P28A cells, which is both smaller and lighter. Towards the end of the flight, we'll compare some results from the Little Brother P28A pack to see how the smaller, lighter battery performs and actually discuss why it's our favorite go-to pack for this quad. Now flying the quad for this test today is our highly trained but oddly elusive test pilot, the Stag. I don't really trust myself for these sort of missions anymore because I keep losing all of our quads. Okay, now we're six kilometers out and our DJI bitrate is dropping. Now the stag says this is okay, but I think we need to improve this antenna setup. However, considering this is a pretty basic antenna setup, it's performing extremely well. In fact, check this out, seven kilometers, incredible. Definitely a little nervous. I'm looking at the bit rates thinking like, ooh, is this thing gonna drop out? But it's holding together quite well, and what an awesome view. Now next time, we're gonna be testing some different antenna setups to see if we can't improve their performance. But for now, let's see how much flight time we can really squeeze from this battery. Now bear in mind, we're not really pushing the battery too hard on this test because it is in fact a range test. But our average speed at the end of the test was about 50 kilometers an hour, and we did in fact climb a distant mountain peak. So we're not going very gentle on this battery either. Ultimately, this battery is performing great. However, as I mentioned, this battery pack is big and heavy, which is why this smaller P28A pack is actually our go-to pack for this quad. For comparison, the P42A pack weighs about 855 grams, which is 45% heavier than the P28A pack, which weighs about 588 grams. So the all-up weight of the quad increases by 22% from 1,285 grams to 1,570 grams, and that's without a GoPro, which honestly makes this quad fly more like a Canada goose, which is a bird, of course, that can fly 1,500 miles per day, but it's not really known for its agility. So basically, you're exchanging flight time for flight ability. But how much flight time are we talking? And that's what we're gonna find out here with this comparison of the P42A cells versus the P28A cells. Now, the one thing I can say for sure from experience is that the quad handles much better with the smaller 18650 pack, which should come as no surprise because you're talking about an extra 250 grams on the quad itself. Now, with both battery setups, you still can do flips and rolls and dives and really basic freestyle, but this is a very heavy seven inch quad, so you're not gonna be doing rapid movements. For example, since these packs are so heavy, when you start to dive, the quad picks up a lot of speed. And when you're really, really close to things, that speed can be hard to control. However, when you're doing a really long dive, like from the top of a mountain peak, that extra weight is gonna help you carry a bit more speed, which will be a little bit more interesting for the flight. In these clips here, I'm doing a full speed dive, but it's such a large landscape that it looks like it's in slow motion. Now, if you're curious about how I'm getting such good range, stay tuned because I'm doing a video about my antenna testing and setup soon. Now, one really important thing to remember about these packs is the extra weight requires really good straps. If you start doing aggressive freestyle with a super heavy battery pack, that thing's gonna have a lot of velocity and can break a strap pretty easily. So you wanna be really careful and make sure that the battery is strapped down really well. All right, so let's finish this test. How much flight time are we talking and which pack do I recommend? Well, you can see that the larger 21700 pack has passed 30 minutes of flight time now. And you can see that the smaller 18650 pack is actually well above 20 minutes. 
I recommend making both of these battery packs because they both have different advantages. For example, I often like to fly the bigger pack to do my first scouting runs to check out a new spot, and then I go back and do my final shots with the lighter, more agile pack. All right, so there we go. That's the end of the test. You can see that we got 31 minutes and 20 seconds from that 21700 pack. Now with the 18650 pack, we got over 24 minutes of flight time. Super impressive. And honestly, I wasn't even really flying that gently. I mean, we we're at the top of a mountain. We were cruising all over the place. Really, really impressive results. Now, if you're curious about my DJI O3 antenna setups or my long range testing, stay tuned for my next video and please subscribe. Till next time, see ya.